been showing you guys a lot of backup footage. Haven't been showing you very much cattle footage. Moving them out of this pasture that we're in right now to this one that's over here behind those trees. Now this is the one that eventually uh, I'm working on digging the pond for and eventually that pond will be fenced in. So I'm going to get them over there so that they find it. Come on. Just so that they know that there's new grass to eat on. Eventually though, I'll actually shut this gate behind them once I get the pond dug. For today, we won't. We'll just leave it open. This one that's over here by herself, she's looking for a calf. It's already over here. That's the other reason I want to make sure they find it and get with the rest of the herd. All of them are over there except for this group. They were kind of stuck in the uh, where the pond's fenced in over there. So that's their only water source right now. So yeah, we'll have to uh, leave this gate open. They'll come back and they'll back grace this pasture a little bit. You can see they've done a pretty good job on it. So flies are back real bad. We're going to have to spray them again soon. Um, we'll get some of that mixed up. And uh, my four wheeler's still down. Part of why I'm on foot out here. Uh, also, it's kind of a nice evening. Let's take a little walk. Come on, girls! Just keep yelling at them, keep calling them. They'll figure it out. I'll get over here to this gate, and uh, as soon as I see the opening, I imagine they'll all run through. So. Most of them. I don't know if you guys can see them off over here. They're already in the new pasture, but just because I've been calling, they're coming over to check it out. They're like, well, maybe he's got food. Maybe he's got feed. And they're all excited. Come on, girls! This takes a lot longer without the four wheeler. Um, four wheelers, I've got it back, of course. You guys remember it got stolen there for just a couple hours. But uh, cops are good. And they got it back for me. Um, them crackheads, when they stole it, I guess they ran over some sharp stuff. There's a bunch of just gashes in the sidewall of the tire. I could have put a, uh, oh yeah, starting to figure it out. I could have put a uh, tube in it, but the tires were getting old. I was thinking about replacing them anyway. So I decided to just go ahead and do that. So the new ones are ordered. I thought they'd be here today. They weren't, so. Hopefully by Wednesday they'll be here. <laughs> you hear them, they're getting excited. Alright. Moving cows. I'll show you here in just a minute. See how many of them get hung up on that gate right there. It's open to the outside, it's the only way that one opens. See all the flies? problem hmm pink eye I'll be working them all this coming weekend we'll fly spray them real good and uh, that one that just ran past and one other one's got pink eye real bad again all right <laughs> look at these calves all right they figured it out it's the calves a lot of times will get hung up on the gate like that they'll get up there in the corner and they can't figure out how to get around it See all the flies on that one? That sucks. So eventually, once that pond is dug, that pond's off over this way, by the way, where I'm going to be working on it. Once I move them in here, close this gate behind them to keep them in here. Uh, can't do that right now because there's no water for them in here, of course. But uh, uh, since that gate's open, they can get back to that pond that they were just in. At least they know they've got fresh grass to eat on tonight. They'll like that. They'll be back out here in the morning. Well, they'll still be here in the morning, but they can go get water as they need. This is where they'll they'll hang out, though. When it gets hot, they'll go hide in those trees, I imagine. Um, still got a lot of broadleaf stuff in here. Next spring, we'll hit this hard um, early on. We'll get this sprayed now that I kind of have the sprayer set up. But you can see this is actually surprisingly pretty good grass. Um, this is pretty average. And it's kind of almost to my elbow. 
So, however long that is, <laughs> about a foot, foot and a half, something like that. That's pretty cool. And this is, I'd had my neighbor help me mow all this down because um, it was all just uh, seed heads and weeds. So, knocked it down just to cut the heads off the uh, weeds was my main goal, mowed it real high. So, good, this is all Bermuda growing up in here. Now this is broom sedge, this tall stuff. Don't love that. There's a uh, pesticide out there called sedge hammer. Never used it. Might try it. Maybe this will be like my experimental spot. I'm gonna mix that in um, with my uh, gray zone or 2,4-D. I might just use straight 2,4-D out here. Mix that in though and see how it does. If I do that, I'll show you how that works. But um, before you actually mix it in the tanks, in the sprayer, you want to do a uh, like a test cup. So you'll mix up, you know, the correct dilution, uh, but in just a small jar, and then watch it for a couple hours and see if it, you know, does anything weird, precipitates out any solids, stuff like that. So. If I mix up anything weird like that, I'll show you how that's done. All in all, really this is quite a bit of forage. A uh, lot of good grass in here, a lot of Bermuda. So that's, um, all this is Bermuda. You know, I got big patches of it out here. And this is all Bermuda and you can see it's starting to seed out. That's okay, I want it to. Um, of course, they're, they're going to eat some of that, but uh, after we pull them off of here, we won't put anything back in, any animals that is, back in here for the rest of the year. Alright, so right over there, that's where that pond's going to go. And so my fence from kind of over there is going to go straight back that way around the pond and tie back in over there. So for a while... This is going to have a lot of trees, a lot of brush, and stuff like that. Um, this stuff. Is that right? This looks a little bit different. This may not be it. This may be like a sage of some sort. I have a lot of a uh, noxious invasive species in here. Um, invasive species of weed, that is. It's called Lesbothesa. I have to get that taken care of. If you get on with any uh, NRCS programs, that's the National Resource Conservation Service, if you get on with uh, any programs with them, they require you to control things uh, like noxious uh, invasive species. That's what they call them as far as the weeds go. Less, but these is one of them. I, I don't think this is actually it. I've got a bunch of it in here, though. So um, we'll control that as best we can. And you control that with uh, gray zone. So the chemical I'm already getting used to using, that was part of the reason I'm using it. Another thing is this type of plant right here. Um, this is, I started to say this was that rose. I think it is, this looks a little bit different. Um, and I haven't sprayed any of this. Obviously we got Bradford pears coming up everywhere. Well that's like an, a paper bark or no, some sort of an elm I think. That's Bradford pear, Bradford pear, Bradford pear, bunch of them. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll, we'll get this pond dug, we'll get this thing fenced in, and then once it's good usable pasture, um, so we got cedar trees, more Bradford pears off over there. Now, the big tall trees out here, we'll leave those, uh, as many of them as I can, and the goal will just be to thin this out enough that sunlight can get down to the bed through kind of the canopy of the woods over here. That'll let grass and everything start growing underneath there. We'll just run animals through there and let them stomp everything down. Stomp down all the undergrowth, all the vines. They'll eat the leaves off of them. That'll put pressure on them. We'll spray intermittently. Um, and of course, uh, at the end of the day, I want to get away from spraying entirely. That's why I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a on a professionally built spray rig that's why I built my own but uh, a little bit of chemical intervention just to get everything on track and then after that we'll be using primarily just the animals to try and 
control all the, uh, the weed prop population, the uh, undergrowth, all the broadleaf stuff, the trees. Cows, they'll, they'll eat it right down. I mean, as soon as those little trees come up, they'll be eating on them. Uh, this is that rose. This stuff's super invasive as well. I don't think the NRA, NRCS considers that a noxious species, but they should. <laughs> it's a problem. Um, one thing that's nice is I don't have a whole lot of those green briars out here, which I have across the creek. So, that's a plus. This is an interesting one. Hmm. Not quite sure what that's called. This stuff that's flowering out a little bit right here. That may be that, that Lesbadiza. may just be starting to flower out. That may be why I don't recognize it. But um, anyhow, we'll get it all under control. Um, I'm hoping that I can... Uh, Virginia Creeper I about tripped on. I'm hoping that I'll be able to take this fence, and I mean, it's a pretty long section. We'll roll it all up over to this corner over here, and then just unroll it back that way. <laughs> That's my goal anyway, and uh, reuse as much of that as I can. And then we'll go back with basically the same fence. I like this field fence um, because it, it keeps calves in. Okay, no, I'm wrong. It's not this corner post. It's the next one is where I'm going to turn the fence and just keep it going straight. I'm not going to turn it at that corner post. We'll just keep it going straight. Um, five strand barbed wire and probably even six strand barbed wire. I don't have any of that out here. But the five strand barbed wire, if you push a calf up against it, that calf can go straight through. And I, I've run into some problems with that. So as I go to building this fence, I will probably go ahead and use this style of this paneling. I call this field fence. It's not perfect. It's a little bit more expensive, but uh, particularly small calves, they can't go through it. They'll run right into it and just stop. And you can see this has been damaged here. It's kind of missing a piece across the middle right there. That big square versus the smaller rectangle. That's one of the problems with it. Um, it does kind of eventually start to fall apart. Over here, the same thing. What likely happened there is they probably caught that at some point. Uh, with a brush hog or something and it could have just been the animals pushing on it honestly and and breaking it it's being right here but that is still um, too small of a hole for a calf to just walk through now they can get through there when they're real small through a square that big but you got to really be pushing them and you're going to get just a second that if you're quick you can run up on them and grab them when they try to get through it so I think this is a better fence, and ultimately, once again, I'm going to have sheep out here. All right, so you can see here where I've started cutting trees down, clear, clear the path for my fence, starting at this corner post. Um, it's basically just going to go straight that way. So, I've gotten there, I've done a little bit of clearing. We'll come in with the backhoe, rip all those stumps out. You can see those? I left those stumps kind of tall so I can find them easily. There's a few of them in there. Rip all those out with the backhoe. It's about ruddy, by the way. Now, like this uh, locust tree here, I didn't bother cutting it down because I'll just rip that entire tree out with the backhoe. It is in the way, but there's no sense in cutting trees down that size. So I can just scoop them right out of the ground. But we'll cut all the way back until I get close to the creek and then turn back west and, and uh, reconnect to my other fence. Uh, we will have to build, of course, um, corner posts. The welder's fixed. It's ready. It's working. So, no big deal there. We'll drag it out there. Some pre-cut pieces of pipe and stuff. Get those put in. Calves are getting nice and big. Gonna be going to town soon, little buddy. It's number 36 right up in front of me, kind of silhouetted, it's hard to see, I know. Looking pretty good. 33 here, this is one of my older calves. Not super impressive, to be honest with you. Um, 
and that one over there as well. And on the smaller side, I'm not not super happy with that. That's why we're going to be renting a bull soon. Get a, a higher caliber bull out here than I could afford. Hopefully, we'll start improving the ge genetics. So the other cool part about renting a bull is that, you know, if I decide to keep a, a heifer calf back, um, and I'm not sure if this is actually even a real concern, but, you know, if they were breeding back to their dad, basically, I don't think that's ideal. I don't know if it'll even work. Uh, but if I'm renting them, I can just rent a bull from a different place and I don't run into that problem. If it even is a problem, it may be fine with cows, I'm not sure. It's a question I need to ask. <laughs> Somebody who knows what they're doing. Everybody's happy. Faces down, eating grass. Number 43 is that big white one right there. I like her. So I thought about buying some replacements, but I think I might just try and grow my own for the, the few that I lost this year. There's probably a few of these girls are going to get cold out of the herd. I'll take a ride to town and it'll probably be the end for them. Who knows, they might end up on somebody else's pasture for a while, but... I think though, and, and we'll see, you know, it just kind of depends on how it works out, but uh, out of the uh, calf crop that I get out of this, this next year, this next season, I've got some really good looking heifer calves, we'll just keep them around, raise them up and breed them back in a, in a couple of years, so the problem with doing that is that it's kind of slow, you know, they need to be... Uh, two years old at least before you actually breed them back so they'll have to be basically just not producing calves and still eating grass for me out here for two years before I can actually get a calf off of them whereas if I just buy a, a heifer or a, uh, a bread heifer even better then I mean that that year she's going to be producing a calf for me but I also don't have to pay for I already own her mom. I just got to get her mom bred to a quality bull. And then I'll have her. Alrighty. Well, beautiful evening out here. It's kind of hot. Not too bad, though. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.